Good morning, Pastor Steve here. Well, this month we're going to be looking at themes that lead to the birth of our Savior and maybe his second coming. So enjoy me during this ponder time as we look at important themes. We'll start today in Isaiah 9 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has light shined. You know, the prophet Isaiah told about the coming of Christ nearly 700 years before Jesus arrived. The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls added really a lot of weight to this book's authenticity and let people who will hear know that God is always on time. Galatians 4.4 4 tells us that when the, the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son. Steve Brown of Key Life uh, Ministries tells of two streams of human history. One is the Judeo-Christian stream of history. About 2000 BC or so, God chose a, a nobody to start a family for himself. This small group lived in the middle of a far more advanced culture than their own. You'd expect that they would be assimilated into the surrounding cultures because that's the way things happen. But just the opposite happened. Living among people who sacrificed their children to their many gods and people who worshipped uh, the sun and the moon, these Hebrews worshipped one god. In fact, they developed the, the highest form of monotheism the world had ever known. The ethical and moral system was sophisticated and their theology was ahead of anything on the planet. The Hebrew religion is one of the great mysteries of history. From a sociological standpoint, it doesn't make sense that it developed and persevered. From a biblical standpoint, it's no mystery. They really were God's people. They really were chosen by God, and they were right. So imagine this Judaic stream of history beginning around 2000 BC, moving down a corridor of time. Now look at the other mainstream, the Greco-Roman stream of history. This began about the 12th century BC with the Greek conquest of the Aegean civilization, and it moved through the Athenian Golden Age, the Peloponnesian War, the conquest and rule of Alexander the Great, and finally to the rule of Rome. See, within this stream of history, we find great learning and philosophy and architecture and science and art. By the time the Romans ruled, there was a common language, a common coinage, and best of all, the Pax Romana, peace in the world, sort of. Now it gets interesting. These two streams of history move side by side and in separate corridors of history more than a thousand years. But in the first century, these two streams crossed. And at the point that they crossed in a tiny stable in Bethlehem, Jesus was born. Now, from a human point, a purely human point of view, if he were born 70 years earlier when the Parthians occupied Jerusalem, you would never have heard his name. If he were born 70 years later, after the fall of Jerusalem, you wouldn't have known it either. But during this brief Interval for the first time in human history, it became possible for a story to spread throughout the Eastern world. For the first time in human history, an idea could be heard by men and women everywhere. And for the first time in human history, it was possible for a man born in a little village in a small country, never traveling more than 40 miles from his hometown, to become known and loved by thousands in countries and cultures far different from his own. I say from a human point of view, but none of this was by accident. Like the great communicator that he is, God waited for the audience to be silent before he spoke. The Word. John once says, in the beginning was the Word. Words are important in these two streams of human history. There's the concept that comes down through of the Word, the Logos. God prepares before he acts. God works in process. God is sovereign over the process. John 1, 1 through 18, if you read it, was a new beginning, and every Greek philosopher and every Jew and Gentile might well have responded with, of course. For at that point, God himself entered time and space. He is the light that came into the darkness. Plato said, you'll never know God unless you, he send, tells us his logos. In the beginning was that word. Oh, he is always on time. You ponder that.